Well, you're quite right. Um, houses now in Cambridge cost 16 times the average salary, apparently, um, which means that we're attracting the best brains and they can afford to live in Cambridge, but uh, we do need teachers, bus drivers, cleaners, refuse collectors, and I guess <coughs> children not having to move out of the city to get a, a, a decent house. Um, government, the government regulations relating to right, right to buy and right um, to stay um, of those in social, social housing are reducing the stock and funds available, which makes it very difficult. However, in the local plan, uh, currently of the 34,000 houses proposed, 10 of those, 10,000 of those, sorry not 10, 10,000 of those, um, are going to be affordable housing which uh, I think is good news and we need to keep, to keep that figure. Um, so as a council uh, and as a councillor I would fight for these regulations, uh, central government regulations to be changed um, and insist on affordable housing provision being funded in any talks that we have on devolution, um, uh, becoming a part of Suffolk, Norfolk, and uh, Cambridge and Peterborough. Um, one of the one of the stalling points at the moment is an unwillingness uh, of the government to allow um, uh, an afford affordable housing. Thank you. I mean, people go in about the affordable houses that uh, the government well, so I'm not letting this build, but we should be building. And the thing is, um, I work with some pharmacists, and they're, they're not on a bad wage, these pharmacists, but they cannot afford to buy a house in Cambridge. They are mostly renting, living together in, in a shared house and renting, because they, they cannot afford a deposit for the, social, for the uh, shared housing in Cambridge. Um, so I think as well, the, the social housing needs to be looked into, because as my colleague was saying there, you need the cleaners, you need the, the refuse collector, you need people who are going to do these jobs. So where they're going to live, they're not going to be paid a good enough wage to be able to afford to buy a house outside of Cambridge and commute in. So we need more social housing for them as well, which seems to get forgotten in your um, reasonable priced houses that people want to buy. So I feel quite passionate about it. I live in a council house, I've lived there 40 years. Um, I have no intention of buying my house. I'm quite happy to live in a council house. And I'm, I'm not ashamed to say that I do. So I think that as these houses are being sold off, we should be replacing them at least one for one. Do you agree? Young people um, are definitely struggling to get into the housing ladder in Cambridge. We all know about it. Um, I believe uh, Cambridge has become very expensive over a period of time to you know, buy houses, especially for young people. And uh, many young people, and you know, they need uh, affordable house for lots of different reasons. You know, some of them work uh, part-time, some of them um, uh, may work full-time, uh, but probably, uh, you know, uh, low paid jobs uh, and also some of the people work full time for certain essential service like, you know, police officer, nurse, um, you know, carer, um, you know, they can't um, afford um, to pay, uh, you know, the market rate. So they need affordable homes. But the problem is, um, you know, um, the affordable homes are not coming up that quickly, the supply is very less. As a result, the waiting <coughs> list for social housing continue to grow, which forces the people uh, to move into um, private rented accommodation. And the problem with private rented accommodation, it comes with a short uh, you know, contract, and, you know, and also the unpredictable rent increase and uh, you know, um, it's not uh, suitable for uh, many people who are in need of housing and can't afford to be in the housing ladder. So how do we solve that problem? The immediate solution, I think, is to increase the supply of more affordable houses in Cambridge and also to work closely with uh, registered social landlords, <coughs> private developers, parish council, and other interested parties to ensure 
the required uh, affordable houses within the planning, um, you know, within the planning, um, you know, facilities and strategic uh, development are delivered, and also there is a, there should be an overall increase of supply um, of affordable houses in South Cambridgeshire, which will reduce the load and younger people can buy um, some of those houses. And I think, um, you know, I, and also, um, you know, I would recommend that, you know, um, we, we need to have a good look at the planning policies uh, to make the best use of planning policies to ensure that when new developers, um, you know, build new housing estates, they should fulfill the requirement <coughs> of those planning policies to deliver a certain number of affordable houses. And that will definitely help the younger people. Thank you. Yes, perhaps it is a bit of a paradox that in a city famous for its university, which is, of course, a great place that young people aspire to come to, that it doesn't, as a city, necessarily support those who graduate from that place, uh, or indeed uh, younger students and younger people to, to stay here uh, uh, in an affordable way. There's been much talk about Housing, that was indeed a, another question that was going to come up to all of us. Um, uh, so, uh, so yeah, that's been answered. Um, uh, it's a shame that uh, the compromises continue to be made. That for all the good talk we read today in the Cambridge News about uh, development at Marshalls, uh, which um, via the, plan the planning has allowed for just 30% of social affordable housing to be part of. Uh, part of the planning, um, and the, uh, despite the good words that there should be a greater number of social housing within that development, uh, it was a, a, a voted through as, a, as an agreed plan. So the compromises are always made, and uh, I think that's the, the same thing. But we have a university here which is wonderfully resourced. We have wonderful schools and colleges. We need to work together as a networked city that, sees, uh, that extends that, the metaphor of learning into everyday life so that we can support, as a city, a place for young people to find early career steps uh, into the great growth city that we are, finding internships, supporting internships, supporting programmes of progression that allow students to explore uh, different uh, work opportunities here. And I think it is about bringing all the stakeholders in the city together. It's, uh, the city council is just one part of the, of the system here that needs to bring people together to think about the future of the city and, and indeed to put young people uh, at the centre of what that future means. We need another council because, as you say, we are growing, pretty it is growing. Um, so it's a lot of work and it would be too much work, I think, for just two people. We need three people on there to, to split that work so we can actually give you the best of ourselves, so we can actually do what you want us to do for you and, and uh, work very, very hard for you to get that. Like I say, I retire next year, so I, I, I need another hobby and this is the one I'm going to take on, so I do hope for that. I think, um, you know, uh, Queen Edith and the City Council needs better opposition. We don't have enough representation in city council from Conservative Party, and I think it is high time that we have a better representation, which is a great synergy because if we are uh, locally here, then we can also talk to central government and uh, get more funding, uh, possibly for the community. And second thing is, um, you know, I was the only candidate um, to uh, come and attend the South Area Committee meeting earlier this week. And I think this was the wonderful platform and possibly the best platform to raise local people's voice. And I made sure I come and represent local people's opinion and issues. And uh, I think I also have business background, as I have told you. This will tremendously help City Council to implement certain projects which often get delayed. And I can uh, use my experience to make things more efficient. And this is the reason I would request all of you to vote for Conservative on 5th May. Uh, I think the problems facing Cambridge, challenges, shall we say, facing Cambridge, facing Queen Edith, uh, go beyond party politics. I don't think the colours uh, matter here. But what is needed, as Manus has indicated, is 
a clear position of opposition and discussion, public debate, in which different views can be aired, in which the future of our great city can be discussed in, 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 in a genuinely diverse, uh, diverse, diverse way. Um, the Green Party currently has an active councillor in the market, market ward, uh, who is making great strides and has done wonderful things in his first year to introduce uh, new initiatives, new ideas to what Cambridge can be as a city. I'll name just one example, the City of Sanctuary, which um, Oscar, along with others in the council, took a lead in creating, uh, which is to make Cambridge a welcoming city for those who are in need of refuge. The Green Party stands for change, but it stands for a long-term vision of that change, with a future in mind. Cambridge is a place full of good ideas, great resources, uh, wonderful people. It needs a strong council that is diverse, represents different views, and can bring all those views together. And I believe as a, as a councillor here, that would be my primary role, to facilitate good, informed research discussion about how to make Cambridge a sustainable and happy place to live a long time into the future. Uh, some of you may remember looking around, not many, but a few, um, may remember in the 1980s, uh, Battersea posted the smallest ever council um, tax rate. It wasn't called council tax then. But, uh, and I remember one of the inhabitants being um, interviewed uh, as to what they wanted from their local council. And his response was, um, empty the bins and clean up the dog poo. <laughs> well, I want more from my council than that. I want my council to do its best to offset the damage caused by the government's cuts program. <clears throat> I want my council to provide affordable housing. I want my council to improve access into and out of the city. I want my council to promote a healthier city and I want my council to help sustain its communities. I read recently that the electorates in the last general election preferred competence over compassion in choosing its leaders. I want my council, and I believe it does, to provide both. So vote Labour on May the 5th. Thank you very much for really good answers, and, and I think the whole evening was excellent. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation. For that.